Hello, it is Zerid Osmani, Head of Global Long-Term and Constraint at Martin Curry and Portfolio Manager of Global Portfolio Trust with a second update in our podcast series. Before we start, I would like to send our congratulations to and support for the healthcare workers around the world. The frontline work they are doing is heroic, courageous and commandable. We send you our strong moral support in what must be a difficult and busy time and no doubt a worrying time for everyone involved. We have structured this podcast into three parts. The first one is to give a market update. The second part is to highlight potential opportunities in a post-pandemic world. And the third part is to zoom in on our investment process in more detail. As a reminder, we manage high-conviction best ideas funds on a long-term time frame, offering global, international, European and US versions of the funds to our investors, depending on geographic preference. Our funds focus on quality growth companies with sustainable business models, high pricing power and therefore returns potential, attractive growth prospects and solid balance sheets, which typically makes our funds able to perform well through most market conditions and notably have shown to be defensive in periods of market sell-offs. Let's start with an update on our market thoughts. And it is important here to highlight that we are long-term investors and therefore see these market updates as having to be taken in the context of that time horizon. We are going through a downturn without precedent. It is both a supply and demand shock simultaneously. It is also globally synchronized given the nature of the shock, i.e. a pandemic crisis. It is unprecedented in magnitude as testified by the most recent colossal increase in jobless claims in the past week in the US, but also seen across geographies. But we think this recessionary environment is different from what we have seen in the global financial crisis of 2008 and 2009. We entered that crisis in a bubble state, with serious dislocations in some parts of the market and a weak banking system. On the other hand, this recession has been brought upon by an exogenous shock. We enter into it in a relatively stronger state, with no major dislocation in markets, private sector balance sheets strong, a higher degree of confidence generally, and banking systems in good shape across the world. Magnitude and duration of this recession is clearly unknown at this stage, as is the shape of any recovery. But we would highlight the magnitude of the policy responses we have seen so far, in some instances equating to more than 10% of GDP being pledged in terms of policy action. Given the size of the policy actions globally, there is the potential for economic activity to recover rapidly in H2 2020 and into 2021 once the situation normalizes, something that we will be updating in our next podcasts. The other point to highlight about the markets is that volatility has been extremely elevated. We have been seeing a very rapid adjustment to the recessionary environment that we have entered. We think volatility will remain elevated for the time being, given the ongoing uncertainties. Markets are currently going through a sanguine bull-bear battle at the moment. The bears are focusing on the short-term uncertainties, the sharp negative impact on economic activity, and the need to significantly adjust earnings estimates downwards. We are going through a period of profit warnings, which will continue, that will potentially accelerate over the next two quarters. Dividend policies are also at risk of being revised down or altogether being suspended. But the next couple of quarters could also give us more visibility on magnitude of earnings downgrades and will also potentially give us early signs of stabilization in economies that have gone through this pandemic earlier, notably China. There have already been some encouraging early signs in leading indicators in China in particular in the past week. If we continue to see such encouraging signs of stabilization and potentially gradual recovery in China and Asia, that could provide more material for the bulls to get excited about the potential for a market recovery. We think markets will start to look through the earnings downgrades we're going through and the recessionary fears towards the potential for a recovery in the next few quarters as we see more evidence of such stabilization. Moving now to the second part of our podcast, focusing on the opportunity we foresee post-pandemic crisis. Firstly, we could see more state involvement in economies generally. Secondly, infrastructure plans are likely to accelerate, notably railway infrastructure, of which high-speed network, and 5G telecoms infrastructure upgrades. 
Thirdly, healthcare infrastructure spend is likely to be high in order for governments to better prepare for the next pandemic threat. Food safety standards are likely to increase as well. There will be a need for a global coordinated approach to monitoring of future pandemic threats. Online education spend is likely to increase as well. And finally, tax rates are likely to be going up, both corporate and personal tax rates potentially. So for us as long-term investors using DCF as one of our evaluation tools, we are spending more time reflecting on what long-term corporate sustainable tax rates companies will be facing, which will have an impact on the upside to fair values that we estimate. All in all, there are many opportunities that we foresee post the pandemic crisis. We have been looking into companies that are exposed to these increased spending plans that we highlighted, in particular in the industrials and healthcare sectors. Moving to the third part of our podcast, which is about giving our listeners more details about our investment process, zooming in on our second step in our three steps process. We already mentioned step one in our first podcast, which is how we screen for quality gross ideas. So step two is about in-depth fundamental research that we put any company that has come out of our screening process through. We have a structured proprietary innovative fundamental research framework, which permits us to assess all key risk exposures that we foresee in any company that we analyze. It is a structured list of risks which are bucketed into four areas. Firstly, industry risks. Secondly, company risks. Thirdly, ESG risks, which is something that we put a lot of emphasis on. And fourthly, portfolio risks that any stock would bring if we were to include it into our portfolios. This structured fundamental risk analysis framework enables us to identify all the potential risks to the investment case of any company that we analyze, which then feeds into step three, which is portfolio construction. This ensures that we do not take any unintended risk exposures and that we have full visibility of all the risks we expose our investors to when including a company in the portfolios. Think about this risk framework in the same way as a plane before takeoff using a detailed structured checklist to ensure that all areas are assessed thoroughly before takeoff. In future podcasts, we are going to zoom in on the various risk assessments to give our listeners more detail about how we assess every company we research. There are two other important components to our fundamental research step. The first one is a detailed governance and sustainability analysis, which is fully integrated into our fundamental framework i.e. our analysts carry the ESG analysis themselves. The second one is the valuation framework, which is very structured and focused on assessing fair value of companies we analyze based on long-term assumptions. Therefore, that valuation framework is very much based on long-term valuation tools, which we will be detailing in future podcasts. Finishing with a few words on the portfolio. The portfolio shape hasn't changed materially. We are still looking at the long-term picture without making any radical changes. We are still looking at some attractive long-term beneficiaries of the strong structural growth trends that we foresee. We have been checking our holdings for supply chain dependency risk, but also balance sheet risks and earnings and dividend risks. We will focus on earnings downside risk in our next podcast as one of our topics, alongside giving another market update And finally, zooming in on our third step to our investment process, which is portfolio construction and the innovative and proprietary risk assessments that we have put in place to ensure that we build portfolios that are high conviction and diversified at the same time. I would like to finish this podcast with sending our thoughts and moral support to everyone affected by this pandemic crisis across the world and sending our moral support and show of admiration to all frontline health workers in this unprecedented crisis. Thank you for listening. It is Zeri Dosmani, Head of Global Long-Term Unconstrained Equities and Portfolio Manager of Global Portfolio Trust at Martin Curry.